okay? All right, so here we go. Today, we are learning about permutations. All about the permutations today. So we are going to use permutations to count outcomes, and we're gonna use permutations to compute probabilities, and there's another verb in there, solve some problems. So this is a way to count things without having to count things individually, because it's going to get real tricky to do that when we start looking at large lists of things. So it says probability is based on counting possible outcomes. In the previous course, or in this course, you have used various techniques, techniques such as listing a sample space, the addition rule, the multiplication rule, the fundamental counting principle, and tree diagrams to count outcomes. So all those things that we have just done up until this point. So here we go, let's jump right on in. Number one, suppose five children line up for a family portrait. In how many different ways can the children line up for the portrait? How many choices are there for the first place in line? Five. Five, there's five kids, so you have five people to choose from. So there are five possible choices. Suppose a child has been chosen for the first place. How many choices are there for the second place in the, in the line? Four. Four, yeah, one has been chosen already, so now there's four left to choose from. So there's four, I'm just gonna put P-O-S-S -S for possible choices, since one was already chosen for first place. And I'll give you guys a minute to write that down. There's four possible choices since one was already chosen for first place. Then for part C it says continue the pattern. For the third, fourth, and fifth places, use the fundamental counting principle to determine the number of possible ways the children can pose for the portrait. So, there were five possible ways to choose the first person out of the five. Then now, the next thing is, well, there's only four choices left to find to pick this, the second place person. Now there's only three people left to pick the third place. And then there's two people left to pick the fourth place, and then of course there's just one person left to pick that very last spot. So it's five, four, three, two, one. Five times four times three times two times one. So before we figure out what this is equal to, this has to do with the fundamental counting principle. It states that if one event can occur in n different ways and a second event can occur in n different ways, then together the events occur in m times n different ways. Another way that this is written, which you're gonna find out soon, is with an exclamation mark. I'll we'll talk about that in just a second. But this is five times four times three times two times one. Notice these numbers are special because they're just, it's a sequence of numbers from uh, largest to smallest as it goes all the way to one. What's five times four? What's 20 times three? And 60 times two? 120. So there's 120 different ways that those five kids can be arranged in a row for their family portrait. Believe me, growing up, there was, I mean, I'm the oldest of 13, so having to arrange us in different ways for a family portrait was always very tricky for the photographer to figure out how to set us up. There's so many of us. There weren't always 13 of us, though. I mean, the, the 13th, my, my youngest brother, he was born uh, after I was already married. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Anyways, so similar to how they were used with the binomial theorem. Now, you don't know what the binomial theorem is. That's what you're going to learn in math three first semester. But basically, this is what I want you guys to take a look at. Right there. That exclamation mark after the five, it is called a factorial. A factorial, anytime you see that after a number, it just means that number times all the numbers below it all the way down to one. 
So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is what 5 factorial is. 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 5, 1, 3, 2, 1. All the way down to 1. Okay? This notation is very helpful because, say you have 100 factorial. Do you want to write 100 times 99 times 98 all the way down to 1? No, nobody wants to do that. That's a waste of time. So we mathematicians came up with this method, this symbol, to help us not have to write out every little thing. It's kind of nice. It's like a little shortcut. Okay, so it's a very useful notation. It helps shorten things up for us. Okay, something brand new. Also, you do have a factorial button on your calculator. So if you have your calculator out, I know I didn't tell you guys to grab one, so you don't really need one terribly today. Um, there is a factorial button on here. Now, since this has to do with probability, the PRB button, it stands for probability in your calculator. When you tap that, you see things like NPR, NCR, you are gonna learn about these things, but there's the factorial symbol right there. So to get it, say I wanted five factorial, I would hit the PRB button, scroll over to the factorial symbol, hit enter, and there it is, five factorial, and there's the answer. So your calculator can do it for you also, okay? Now, I don't want you guys to rely too heavily on this, but there are some features in here that are pretty cool that shorten things up for you. We'll really focus on that in Math 3. For Math 2, I do want you guys doing it the long way, but for factorials, I'm okay with you guys using the factorial button in your calculator if you can find it. Okay. All right, so go ahead and turn the page. If you want me to show you where it is later, I can show you. That's not a problem. All right, the situation in item one is an example of what we're learning today, a permutation. The number of possible arrangements or outcomes of the five children for the photo is 120 distinct arrangements. This is a simple permutation and can be written as five permutate five, five P five, okay? Or five factorial. Notice that there was no repetition in this event. The same child cannot stand in the first place and the second place at the same time. There's no doppelgangers. There's no clones of two of the kids. They're one distinct, unique person, one unique individual. They can't be in two places at the same time. Okay, it's mutually exclusive, in other words. All right, so also under math terms, there's our definition for permutation. A set of objects in any arrangement of the objects in a distinct order. The number of arrangements for n objects is written as npn, or n from you take n, which is equal to n factorial. <coughs> Bless you. So anytime the number around that p is the same number, it'll just be that number factorial, okay? Another word that's important in here that I want to box is this word right here. Actually, box the words distinct order, those two words. For permutations, Order matters. When the order matters in a situation, you're using a permutation. When we learn combinations tomorrow, you're going to read a problem, and it's not going to tell you if it's a permutation or a combination, and you're going to have to read it and determine for yourself which one it is. So just remember, permutations, the order matters. So if the order matters in the situation, then it's a permutation. If the order doesn't matter, then maybe it's not a permutation, okay? All of the ones today, though, are permutations because we don't know the other one yet. Number two, suppose the photographer wanted three of the children to sit on a bench in the photo. In how many different ways can three of the five children be seated on the bench? Begin with five children, but remember, you only want three to sit on the bench. Well, to pick the first child on the bench, how many children do we have to pick from? How many? Five. All right, so there's five that we could choose from for the first place on that bench. For the second place on that bench, now how many kids are there to choose from? Four. Okay, and now for the third person on that bench, how many kids are there to choose from? Three. But then I stop there because there's only three kids that are gonna sit on that bench. So it's just five times four times three. So what does this equal? 60. 60. So that means that there are 60 different ways that we can arrange 
three out of those five kids on that bench. Okay, so this is the number of permutations of five taken three at a time. This is written and calculated as 5p3, 5 permutate 3. It's equal to 5 times 4 times 3, which was 60 permutations, which is what we got. Okay, so this can also be written using factorial notation in the following way. So if we take this problem, we know it equals 60, but if we back it up and rewrite it, technically we have, um, well, 5 minus 3 is 2, so we have 2 left over in the denominator, so 2 times 1, so 2 factorial. And then 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that's 5 factorial. Well, if we back it up, then we have 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. Well, if we remember that this is the letter N and this is the letter R, we can back this up and say, well, then this is N factorial over N minus R factorial. Okay? Which leads me to this box over here. Under the math tip box, there is our formal formula. So you don't always have to figure this out just by thinking it through. Yes, you do want to think it through. That's extremely important. But once we know where things are going, then we know that we can go straight to this formula for permutations. N permutate R times is equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial. So this little formula is going to come in handy. You're going to be using it a lot when you're dealing with a permutation. Okay. And notice the NPR, there is a function for that in here. I'm not going to show you how to do it, but if you can figure out how to use it, I'll let you use it. Okay. All right, number three. Ten students are competing in the finals of a spelling bee. Okay, so I know that there are ten students that are competing. So that seems like an, a total number of students. The top three spellers are awarded. So we've got first place, second place, and third place. Does order matter? Yeah. yeah. If you're if you got first place, don't you have first place bragging rights? Yeah. Isn't that a bigger deal than third place bragging rights? Right? So order does matter. First place is not the same as third place. You get your bragging rights, okay? So it says, is the order in which the competitors finished important? Yes, absolutely. Yes, order matters. So um, we can say a competitor earns first, second, or third. Of course, those are not equal. For getting first place, second place, or third place, those are not equal. First place is you got the top you want. Okay, you get those bragging rights up there. Yeah, if you play second or third, that's still good, but it's not as good as first. Okay, so it's important to keep that in mind. All right, how many possible ways are there for first place, second place, and third place to be awarded? So this is a permutation because order matters. How many total students are there at the spelling bee? Ten. Ten. So that is our N. So the ten goes first, and then we're permutating. So it's 10 taken, and first, second, and third place, that's, that's three students that are gonna get those places, three people, and that's it, for first, second, and third. So 10 P3, so 10 taken three at a time. So using the formula from up here, it goes N factorial over N minus R factorial. Well, remember, N is the 10 and R is the three, so it's going to go 10 factorial, over 10 minus 3 factorial, okay? And what does the factorial mean again? That number, <coughs> that, that number times the, the numbers downwards, right? So 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, all the way down to 1. I do want you guys to write them all out. I'll show you a shortcut in a little bit. And it's not the calculator that I'm talking about, because that would be a shortcut also. In the denominator, I have 10 minus 3. Well, what is 10 minus 3? 7. So that's 7 factorial. So that's really just 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? Now, these are all being multiplied together, which means that we get to cancel stuff out. What cancels out? 
from the seven on down, right? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. These all cancel out top and bottom. So all we have left up top is 10 times nine times eight. Well, we know 10 times nine is 90. What's 90 times eight? Seven hundred and twenty. So there's seven hundred and twenty ways that students could come in first, second, and third place. That's why it's such a big deal. There's so many ways that it could happen. If you are one of those ways, you were you got the slim chance of doing it. You're skilled enough to make it happen. Okay. All right. So let's look at the check your understanding number four and number five. Let's start with number four. It says the lock on a locker uses three randomly selected numbers from 1 to 25. If no numbers are repeated, how many possible codes are there to open the lock? So, how many total are there from, from 1 to 25? How many numbers? 25. So that's number 4. Okay. So that's our N. We know it's a permutation because obviously if you have a combination on your lock, does the order of the numbers matter? Yes. Oh, yeah. No. You guys know. <laughs> no, not at all. It doesn't matter. You can put them in any order you want. It'll open the lock. No, that's not true. The order matters on a combination lock. The order matters. Okay. And we're trying to pick three randomly selected numbers. So it would be 25P3. Okay. And then we're just using the formula. So it'll go 25 factorial. That's our n, n factorial over n minus r, so that would be 25 minus 3 factorial. And I'll show you the little shortcut I was referring to a moment ago. When I do the shortcut, when I'm simplifying these, because I'm not using the calculator until I have to multiply at the end, I start with the denominator. What's 25 minus 3? 22. 22. I'm going to keep it as 22 factorial. I don't want to write 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 all the way down to 1. I don't want to do that. That's a waste of time. When I get to the numerator, see how it says 25 factorial? I am going to start it. I'm going to go 25 times 24 times 23 times 22, and then I'm going to stop. You guys see where I'm going with this? Okay. Because now I have a 22 factorial top and bottom. Well, they're going to cancel out. They both mean 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, all the way down to times 1. So they cancel out. But I did that without having to write them all out. It's kind of nice, right? So now all I have left to do, which I do need my calculator for, because I don't want to do that in my head, is 25 times 24 times 23. What'd you get? 13,800. 13,800 is exactly it. So there's 13,800 ways that you could come up with three randomly selected numbers for a, a locker combination code. That's why they're hard to crack. Yeah, there are some, some thieves that are really, really good at it, or you don't even necessarily have to be a thief to do that. You guys ever watched, um, what's it called, The Italian Job? What? Never mind. You guys are so young. <laughs> It's not fair. <laughs> it's a good movie. You should look it up. It's called The Italian Job. It's a good, good movie. I think you'd like it. Guys or girls would like that movie. It's one of my husband's favorite movies. Anyways, watch a movie, you guys. <laughs> Number five, a student council with 12 members must choose a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer to head a project. So these are distinct positions. Not anyone could be a president, vice president, secretary, or treasurer. Like you get voted into these things typically, or you have to have the skills to be there. Okay? So order does matter. Looks like there's 12 members that we're choosing from the student council. And how many are we choosing? Four, right. President, vice president, secretary, treasurer. That's four that we're choosing. And how many ways can this be done? So for number five, since I have it over here. How would I write my, my little formula? 12 factorial. Well, it's 12 P what? 12 P 4. And you're right, Chris. 12 factorial over what? 12 minus 4 factorial. 12 minus 4 factorial. Right. So what is 12 minus 4? 8. 8. So remember, when I do my little shortcut, 
to simplify how I write it, I'm going to start with the denominator. It's 8 factorial. So my numerator, I need to write it all the way out until I get to 8. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8 factorial, and then I stop because then I can cancel out those 8 factorials, and then I have 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 left. Has anyone got that answer yet? 11,880. 11,880, that's right. So 11,880 ways that these four people can be selected to be president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. So another example of where order matters. Okay, I'm emphasizing that for a reason so that we can distinguish the difference when it comes to tomorrow's lesson. Turn the page. All right. So now it says when the objects to be arranged are not all distinct, the formula has to be adjusted. So we have to adjust things when they're not distinct. So it says, look at the word bow wow. The letters O and W are repeated. Thus, the letters in the word are not all distinct. Okay, we've got repeats in there. So I want to highlight that word so it sticks out because, I don't know, it doesn't stand out very much in here. So I'm highlighting it so I can refer back to it really quickly. And the problem with this word is we have repeating letters. O and W are being repeated. O is repeated twice. And how many times is the W repeated? Three times. Okay. So here's how we handle this. We don't use the permutation formula for this one. We have to use it distinctly. So it says in letter A, how many permutations of the letters in a six-letter word would there be if the letters were distinct? Well, we're, it's like arranging the five kids for the, the family portrait. In this case, though, there are six letters, B-O-W, W-O-W, there are six letters, so it would be six factorial, right? We're just looking at it, not, we're not ignoring that the letters are repeating, but we kind of are just temporarily. Six factorial is just six times five times four times three times two times one. Does anyone know what that equals? 720. So there's 720 permutations. A permutation is how it's arranged. So there's 720 ways that those six letters could be arranged, but Here's the big but. Because one letter repeats twice and another letter repeats three times, there will be fewer permutations because of the repetitions of those letters. The formula now becomes, well, we have six factorial over, we have to divide out the two letters that are repeated, two factorial, and we have to divide out the three letters that are repeated, the, so three factorial. So now it says how many permutations of the letters are there in the word bow wow. So I'm going to rewrite the 6 factorial because it's actually easier to, to reduce it this way. Okay, That's our numerator. We know that that equals 720. And then 2 factorial is just 2 times 1 times 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. Do you guys see how it's easier to write it down this way instead of having 720 over what this multiplies to? Because we can see what cancels. Anyone see those three, two, ones? Immediately, that's what I focus on. So I'm like, all right, those are gone. And then all I have left is really that two in the denominator. Two goes into six how many times? Three. So all I have left is just three times five times four. What is this equal? 60. 60. Three yes. times five is 15. 15 times four is 60. So there are 60 permutations of the word bow wow. If none of the letters repeated, then there would be 720 permutations. But because there were repeating letters, we have to divide out how many times they were repeated. So we had two of the, the letter O, so we had to divide out a two factorial. And we had three of the letter W, so we had to divide out three factorial. Okay. So and moving on to number seven, it says you can use permutations as well as the counting methods that you've learned previously to calculate probabilities. So now we're, we've practiced calculating the permutations, but now we're going to use these to calculate probabilities. So here is the probability part of the lesson. Okay. 
because that's what this unit is about, probabilities. So it says there are eight swimmers competing in the finals of the 100 meter freestyle event. Ribbons are awarded for first place, second place, and third place. Order matters because obviously first place is not the same as third place or even last place. It, you get bragging rights. Suppose the swimmers are equally skilled and each has an equal chance of winning. So these are elite swimmers, okay? They've all been training for this moment. Letter A, and how many ways can first place, second place, and third place be awarded? Well, how many swimmers are there total? Eight. And how many are gonna place? Three, first, second, third place. So eight P3. Okay, so eight permutated three at a time. So using the formula, it would go N factorial, so eight factorial, over N minus R factorial, so that would be eight minus three factorial. I like to focus on the denominator first. What's eight minus three? Five. Five, so that's a five factorial. So when I do the numerator, I'm gonna go eight, seven, six, but stop at the five and put the factorial symbol back because then I can see that the five factorials will cancel and all I have left is eight times seven times six. So what does this equal? 336. 336 ways. So there's 336 ways that three out of those eight runners could come in first, second, and third place. That's why it's a big deal when you make it there because it's not easy. Caleb and Ronnie and Jose are swimming for the same team. There's only one Caleb, one Ronnie, and one Jose. They are unique individuals. We all each are unique individuals, okay? In how many ways can these three swimmers finish in the top three places? Well, there's three swimmers total, and we want to pick these three. So 3P3, okay? So using the formula, it'll go N factorial, so three factorial, over three minus three factorial. And here's where there's a little bit of a hiccup. So here's another definition that you guys haven't learned yet. What's three minus three? Zero. But that's not just any zero. This is gonna be three factorial over zero factorial. And for a definition here, zero factorial does not equal zero. Anyone have a one. guess as to what it equals? A one. Zero factorial is one. And if I were to type that into my calculator, I'll type in zero and go to the, oops, go to the factorial symbol. It's gonna tell you that it equals one. It's not gonna say error, because it isn't an error. Zero factorial by definition equals one. So this is really a one, which means that all I have when I'm divided by one doesn't change anything. It's just three times two times one. So how many ways is this? Six. So there's six ways that these three people can finish first, second, and third. It, obviously, you're just taking these three people and you're, you're scrambling them up like Caleb, Ronnie, Jose, uh, Caleb, Jose, Ronnie, Ronnie, Caleb, Jose, Ronnie, Jose, Caleb, like different ways to, to order them. That's what they're doing here. There's only six ways to order those three people in you know, first, second, and third place. Letter C says, what is the probability that Caleb, Ronnie, and Jose will finish in the top three places? So now we're throwing out the word probability. We wanna know the probability, okay? Well, remember, a probability is the number of favorable outcomes out of the total number of outcomes. How many ways total can three people be picked to place? Three hundred and thirty-six, right? That was the total. Total number of ways that three people can be picked out of the eight to be first, second, and third. And they're not just being picked, they're actually making first, second, and third place. Okay? But now, how many of those ways could Caleb, Ronnie, and Jose be the top three? Six. Six. So it's six out of three hundred and thirty-six. I have a feeling that six goes into three thirty-six evenly, don't you? 336 divided by 6 is 56. So 6 goes into itself once and into 336 56 times. So you have a 1 in 56 chance that Caleb, Ronnie, and Jose will finish in first, second, and third place. 
If I look at that as a percent, 1 divided by 56, that's like a 1.8% chance of them finishing first, second, and third. So their chances are slim, especially if you're with eight elite other swimmers. You know, they're all so good. It's going to be a rough go. Letter D, what is the probability that Jose will finish first, Ronnie will finish second, and Kayla will finish third? Well, this is kind of a, oh, you got it. You got it. It is one out of six. There's only one way that this could happen. That Jose is first, Ronnie is second, and Caleb is third. There's only one way. So that's one out of 336 ways altogether. Right. So it's a very, very slim chance. Very slim. Okay. Good job. Number eight. A personal identification number, a PIN number. One of these days you guys are going to have a debit card. Maybe you guys have one right now already. Who knows? I know my daughter has one. You're going to have a PIN number, a five-digit PIN number or a four-digit PIN number is more common. Um, but this one is going to be a five-digit PIN number from zero through nine. No digit can be used more than once, so no repeating digits, because we know if we have repeaters, then we have to do this type of situation with that, okay? But no repeaters, okay? How many different pins are possible? It's a lot more than two. <laughs> too many. Too many, oh, okay, well, yeah, there will be, there will be a lot, it's a big number. Well, how many numbers is this from zero through nine? Ten. Ten. Right, because you have to count the number zero. One through nine would be nine numbers, and then zero makes it the tenth number. So there's ten to choose from, and we are arranging them with five digits. So five at a time. So 10P5. So 10 factorial over N minus R factorial. So that's 10 minus 5 factorial. Remember, for my little shortcut way, I take care of the denominator first. So what's the denominator going to become? 5 factorial. So when I do the numerator, I'm going to just go down to 5, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and then put the factorial back and stop it right there because then I can cancel out those 5 factorials. So then all I have to do in my calculator is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, which is 30,240. So you're right, Levi, it's just too many ways. <laughs> But that's why a five-digit pin is better than a four-digit pin, because if you have less numbers to, to use, that means your chances of finding it are higher. So a five-digit pin is actually better than a four-digit pin. Now you guys know that. You get to set your pin on your iPhone, but your little sibling doesn't, you know, log into your phone and look at your pictures and read your text messages. You know, Lucas is always trying to do that to Violet's phone all the time. Just ask <laughs> She, he thinks that she's just taking all these pictures of him and posting them everywhere. And I'm like, why? Why would she want to post pictures of her little brother? I don't know why they think that. I'm like, but you're not the center of the universe. Calm down. <laughs> you know? But he does. It's funny. But he's, you know, he's turning 10 next month. So all right. Suppose Peggy cannot remember her pin. Oh, no, I've been there. It sucks. If she enters five digits at random, what is the probability that she will guess it correctly? Well, isn't her one PIN number, her five-digit PIN number, isn't that the only one? Like, it's distinct? It's mm -hmm. one in 30,240. Yep. It's one in 30,240. That's the chances of her guessing it. Okay? Now, if, if she's like me, I mean, if I forget my PIN, and I've done it before, you kind of remember some of the numbers, but you may not remember the exact order. So, so knowing that, I might have a better chance, but it's still, it's still pretty slim. Still pretty slim. So I'm going to, for my wording here, I'm gonna put, this is a very, very slim chance of guessing it correctly. I'm like, if you guess it, then maybe you should go play the lottery because you might be on a winning streak. I don't know. Letter C. Huh? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you should be careful because your chances are just too positive that something negative is gonna happen. Oh, that too. Yeah. Take your winnings while you can. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Don't risk it. I know. 
I don't know, probability, there's so much risk involved with it. Anyways, suppose Peggy remembers that the first two digits of her pen, pen are odd, okay? Given this information, what is the probability that she will guess her pin correctly? Show how you can use permutations to find the answer. Okay, so there's five numbers in her pin. Okay, so I know that I, there, I have a total of five. And she knows that two of them are odd numbers. So I can go 5P2 to figure that out. Okay, now if she can guess those two, or she knows the two that are odd, how many of the numbers don't, doesn't she know? Bless you. Three. Three of them. And there are, um, how do I want to explain this? So there are 10 total, right? And if we know two of them, 10 take away two is eight. But there's three left for her to find. So we have that. So this is what we need. There's five digits in a pin. She knows, bless you, she knows two of them are odd numbers. So 5P2, okay? But if you look overall, we have 10 numbers to choose from. But if we know two of them are odd, then take away those two from the 10 and you have eight. And then there's three numbers that she has left to figure out, okay? So 5P2 and 8P3. So 5P2, using the formula, it's five factorial over five minus two factorial. Okay, so what's the denominator going to be with a factorial? Three factorial. Okay, so I'll go five, four, three factorial and stop. The threes cancel, so what is this equal? 20. So there's 20 ways that we can find the two, the two odd ones, the digits that can be odd. All right, then 8P3, so that would be 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial. So what factorial will be in the denominator now? 5. 8 minus 3 is 5. So 8, 7, 6, 5, and then we'll stop and put the factorial back. 5 factorials cancel, so we just have 8 times 7 times 6, and what is that equal? 336. So it's 336 ways that the remaining digits can be found. Okay, so there are two things going on here. We know two of the digits are odd. We just don't know what they are. We just know that they're odd. So there, that's 20, okay? On top of that, we have three more digits to find. So those three more digits, we find them. There's 336 ways to find them. So it's 20 times 336 out of the total overall is what we need, okay? The total overall is going to be um, what these multiply to. So 20, what is 20 times 336? 6,720, okay? So 6,720 ways is the total number of ways of guessing those five numbers, knowing two of them are odd, and then finding the rest of them that aren't odd, right? So, her pin number is distinct, isn't it? There's only one way out of, like, remember how I said this is gonna be the total? So her chances of finding that pin are one out of 6,720, if she guesses it correctly. You think her, her chances are better than this, right? Yes. But is this gonna be likely? It's got to be more than 50% to be likely. Let's see what percent that is. 1 divided by 6, 7, 2, 0. Look at all those zeros. Like this, this would be in the tenths. This is uh, the hundreds, thousands. Like if this is 0.01%. It's 0.01%. It's not even 0.01. It's 0.01%. So it's super, super, super slim. Okay. So words to the wise. <laughs> Write down your pin numbers. I, I like to keep a little booklet. I don't keep it digitally because what if something happens to your phone or your iPad or whatever you're storing it in? Keep like a diary of all passwords and pins and stuff and keep it where no one else is gonna find it, underneath your mattress or whatever, or in a shoe box in your closet, and then just refer back to it. That's what I do. Okay, always write stuff down. All right, so I'm gonna end it right here.
You guys can get started on the homework. Your homework is on this page. It is numbers 10 through 13 from 28-1. So make sure you add this to the, wait, did I give you guys a new homework? No, Go ahead and press.